Hi everyone, it's Karen from the Geordie Grandma. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a collaboration with the Transatlantic Housewives of YouTube, who are Busy Bee Marie, Tina's Talk Time, and Maria Crocker. Um, and as it's Sunday, this is the Sunday Sunshine Show. And today's topic is childhood memories. Uh, so we, if you've never seen the, our Sunday show before, um, it's a collaboration with the ladies I've just mentioned. Um, and we all talk about the same topic, but obviously put our own spin on it. And when we decided to do childhood memories, um, I, I really like the idea. It's, it's really nice to reminisce. So, uh, I was born in 1963, so my childhood memories are going to be from the 60s up to about 78, 79. There's so many childhood memories you could think of. So I've jot, I just jotted down some ones that just came straight to my mind when I thought about uh, childhood. So I'm just, I'm just going to go through them. They're not really in any particular order. And this is probably going to be a bit of a rambly video, but, um, there you go. So the first things that I thought about were obviously like sweeties and foods and things like that. And what came straight to my mind when I thought about sweets, was spangles. Remember spangles? They used to have them in all different flavours, like I think they were orange and lime and lemon and but the ones I used to like were aniseed. Um just I found a picture, uh, I'll I'll put it up here. I think it's a post I can buy. In in just those aniseed spangles were really, really good. Um I don't think they still sell spangles. Uh, but they were good. Can you remember Spangles? Um, yeah, I definitely like those. Can you remember getting a, well, I remember getting a mix up from the shop. I know you can still get mix ups now, but I'm sh pretty sure this was before decimal money. Um, we used to get a half pence mix up from the shop and I'm sure you used to get about six or seven sweets in this half pence mix up and they'd last you for ages. Uh, I think it cost you about £1.50 or £2 now for a mix-up. But yeah, those were the sweets I remembered. I also remembered, and I was talking about this the other day, whatever happened to ski yoghurt? I used to really love ski yoghurts when I was little. I, they used to come in like a like a, a pot shaped like that. Um, if I can find a picture, I'll put one here. I've, I remember the orange ones I used to like the most, but they were always thick and creamy. And you don't seem to get yogurts like that anymore. They're all these, these mousses or corners or, I just want a straightforward yogurt. You, you know, yogurts that are good for your stomach and things like that. But I just want the ski, just ordinary yogurt in the pot that you could actually get all the yogurt out of not these square shaped ones where you have to dig into the corners and you kind of get it out so yeah ski yogurts i remember fondly another food i remember was vesta curries can you remember those i'm sure they were boiling the bag curry and rice i think you could get them in beef and prawn and chicken and there might have been other things um, other than curries, but I definitely remember the curries. And I'm not sure if they had like a uh, like a crispy noodle one. Um, but yeah, we thought we were quite sophisticated with Vesta curries back in the 70s. Um, I don't think you can still get those. But uh... the other thing that I remembered food-wise from my childhood was going to the fish and chip shop and getting your fish and chips or your bag of chips wrapped in newspaper, that must have been so bad for you. I mean, this, you know, the, the grease that was on the chips, I think they used the newspaper because it's quite absorbent and it soaked the grease up. But can you imagine all of the ink you were eating off the, off the newspaper? I'm not surprised that they kind of phased that out, but I, I, I remember that fondly, fondly getting me, um, me chips wrapped in newspaper. So moving on from food, these are things that um, to do with the home that I remember. And the first thing I remember, and probably everybody of my age remembers, this power cuts. And I think this was early 70s. Um, I don't think power cuts actually f affected us in our household too much. Uh, possibly for a lot of people back then, because you, you didn't have computers. Not a lot of people had TVs. Um, you, you didn't have like, uh, computer games, things like that. So we probably didn't miss it that much. 
obviously you, did, you couldn't have a you didn't have your electric cooker but i'm not sure if ours was gas um and you used to have candles used to have those those long candles um we used to have them all over the house and like if if you think about it if you think about the power cuts you can remember the smell of the candles from back then and they weren't scented candles they were just ordinary candles so the smell was obviously just the candles burning but uh yeah i remember that I don't know how people would cope now if there was a power cut, you know, if you cut off from your TV or, you know, your YouTube. Well, no, if you had a power cut, I don't think your mobile phone would go out, would it? So maybe that wouldn't affect people too much. But if you watch YouTube on the telly, it would, obviously. The other thing I remember to do with the home is having an outside toilet. Now, this must have been in the 60s, um because we would move by the 70s. So definitely I didn't have an outdoor toilet then, but we had an outdoor toilet in the 60s. And having to go to the outdoor toilet in the winter, when it was snowing, and it really snowed back then, it, it I, I just, I, I vaguely, well, no, I, I don't vaguely remember it. I do remember it well. It was freezing. You, had to run, you ran to the toilet and then you ran back. And if you had to get up in the middle of the night, that was just horrendous. Because there was always spiders in there. Um, and you'd have the nine times out of ten, you wouldn't have toilet roll. You'd have torn up newspaper on the back of the toilet door. It was horrendous. Um, yeah, that that's not a... It is a childhood memory, but it's probably not a fond childhood memory. Outdoor toilets. Let us know if you had an outdoor toilet. I'd be interested to know. And the other thing that stuck in my mind from uh, childhood, from the home, was the clothes ringers. I think we called them mangles. And I'll put a picture here if I can find one. And they were like, when you when your mum had washed your clothes, um, and then it was like two ringers, and you turned the handle, you put the clothes in, and you turned the handle, and the clothes went through, and you used to wring all of the water out before they hung it up on the line. And I really do remember nipping my fingers doing this quite a few times because you, you had to feed the, the clothing in and it would just, you'd turn the handle and sometimes it would nip the ends of your fingers. <laughs> That's not a fond memory, but uh, I think every household had one of those back in the 60s and maybe early 70s as well before we got, um, you know, proper washing machines. But yeah, mangles, you can still actually buy those on Amazon, I saw. So after the home stuff, uh, we move on to toys. And I don't remember an awful lot of toys from my childhood. Um, I did do a, a video, maybe it's two or three years ago, and I'll link it um, at the end if I, can, if I remember to. And it was to do with childhood games. And I think I did seven or eight childhood games I remembered. That was quite fun to do. But the, I think the main toy I remember um, from being young is me roller skates. I was forever on me roller skates. They're not the roller skates that you get these days. These roller skates, were the, they were like a metal base and they had like a red a red bit on the front that you put over your toes and you it had lace through it and you tied it with the lace. Then there was a strap that went around your ankle and you could adjust the skates. It had a a key and you could you could pull the, the bottom of the skate out uh, you know to fit your feet better but I was forever in those roller skates me and my friends would constantly be out on roller skates I don't think I could do roller skating now I bought my granddaughter some roller skates last year and she really enjoyed them um but you just feel like we didn't have like arm pads and helmets and things like that we must have had so many injuries um, back then. Health and safety just wasn't around. Um, but yeah, I used to love my roller skates. And I think the, the other toy that, that came to mind when I was thinking about this is I had a Tressie doll. I know everybody talks about Cindy dolls and Barbie dolls, but I had a Tressie doll. And what I remembered about this Tressie doll was you, its hair grew. And I think there was a button on the doll maybe on its on its tummy or on its back and you press the button and you pull the hair and the hair grew now i'm not sure how you got the hair back in was did that did it have a key and you, you turned the key and the hair went back in i can't remember that if anybody remembers the trussy dolls can you let us know in the comments how you got the hair back in because i can't remember that but i'm sure my trussy doll had dark hair 
Uh, I wish I still had it, but obviously I didn't keep it from then. I'm sure some people would have done, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, I remember the Tressie doll. Next section that I've, I've kind of grouped these into sections, as you can see. But the next section is to do with probably entertainment and stuff. Um, in one of the TV programmes, I remember, is a programme called why don't you switch off your television set and go and do something less boring instead? And I think they should still have this program today. I mean, they may have for all I know, but I don't think they do. But I used to love this program and it was just a bunch of kids um, and they would talk. I have a feeling Aunt MacPartland was on it and possibly Pauline Quirk. Um, and they used to talk about viewers with sending, you know, recipes. And obviously these were just kids. So there were recipes that kids could do, maybe some chocolate crispy cakes or something like that. And people used to send jokes in. Um, they used to do craft projects that you, that you could do. And because it was kids doing it, you, you obviously took more attention, paid more attention to it. Um, but the, the part of the programme I remember most where they used to have a kid on, a different child each week who collected something and kids back then collected weird stuff they'd collect like bottle tops or plastic carrier bags things like that but it was just really interesting and I always wanted to collect something but I don't think I ever did I know I did have a collection of whimsies um there's another thing from my childhood whimsies but I used to love the collector's section um on that program it just it really made us want to collect something do you remember that program? If you remember it, again, let us know in the comments below. What part of it do you remember and what part did you like most? Going on to books, I was a, I was an avid reader. I have always been an avid reader ever since I was a child. And I think my earliest memories of books have got to be Enid Blyton. Right from the Noddy stories, I remember my nana sitting reading his Noddy stories. But when I started to read for myself... Uh, the books that I remembered are The Magic Faraway Tree. And I went and bought this book a few years ago. Um, my daughter loved this as well. And I'm going to, I'm going to read it. I'm going to keep it and I'm going to read it to me grandchildren and maybe give it to one of them if they, you know, if they're interested. Um, the far, this is the Faraway Tree collection. Uh, obviously not from the, the 60s, the book isn't, but um, The Magic Faraway Tree was a story about a group of young children who went, I think they went to stay with the auntie and she lived near a wood and it was called The Enchanted, if I remember it was called The Enchanted Wood and they went into this wood and they found this tree and they climbed the tree and in this tree there was some like magical people, like there was Mrs Washalot um, who used to took her dirty water down the tree after she'd finished washing and there was a, a character called Moonface um, and I think there was a character called Silky the Fairy. This really stuck in my head, this book. Um, and at the top of the tree was this big cloud and every day or every couple of days a different land would land in the cloud. So there was like, the you know, the, the land of birthdays or the land of topsy-turvy um and the kids might get stuck in that land for a while and not be able to get out. And it was just a really fun book. It's it's maybe not, not the kind of book that kids would want to read these days, but I really enjoyed Enid Blyton books. I also remember one of our books called The Wishing Chair. Um, and it was about this chair that you sat in and it grew wings and you could fly anywhere in it. How fun would that be? Um, that was a really good book as well. Mainly the books that I remember from my childhood have got to be Enid Blyton. Um, I also remember reading the Mallory Towers series, which was about a boarding school, a girls' boarding school, and it just sounded so fun. And I think the main character was called Daryl. Um, and, you know, her and her friends used to have a really good time. They'd have, like, midnight feasts and play lacrosse and, you know, have picnics and everything was jolly and it just sounded so much fun that's probably not what boarding school is like but Enid, Bly Enid Blyton made it sound fun she made me want to go to boarding school um yeah they, they were really fun books I also remember taping the top 40 off the radio can you remember doing that you used to have a little cassette player and the the top 40 on the radio, I don't know if they still do it, but the the play each song and you'd try and record on the tape the songs you liked. 
But the trick was getting the song without the radio presenters talking. So you have to, you had to try and guess when the presenter was going to talk near the end of the song so you could stop it before you started talking. Um, I used to do that every week. You know, you, you'd, you'd tape the, the, the top 40. Not all of them, obviously, because you would have hundreds of tapes, but you would you would definitely um, tape at least the, the, the top 10, you know, the ones you liked. Um, yeah, that that was fun. I used to I used to like music when I was younger, and I think the earliest memory of a, a singer that I really liked was Jimmy Osmond. Um, and I was fuming when he got knocked off the, the number one spot with Longhead Lover from Liverpool, and I'm sure he got knocked off the number one spot by Sweet. Um, I can't remember what the song was, but I'm sure it was Sweet. Blockbuster, was it? Did they have a song called Blockbuster? I don't recall, um, but definitely Jimmy Osmond. I was annoyed when he didn't wasn't number one anymore. Long haired lover from Liverpool. Seen him on Master Chef not long ago, and he's changed a little bit. Uh, but from music from my childhood, I was probably about twelve when the Basically Rollers hit the scene, and I was a huge Basically Roller fan. I wanted to marry Les McEwen. Who was your favourite Basically Roller? If you liked them, definitely Les McEwen for me. And you know, obviously, when you when you like a band like that, when you when you're that age, it's probably from twelve to maybe fourteen. I had some white trousers with the tartan stripe going down the side, um, and you used to have a tartan scarf and you tie it round your wrist, and you thought you were the bee's knees. You thought you looked so cool. I remember wedges I had with them as well. I used to wear wedge shoes, like platform wedges. I must have looked horrendous. I did have a photograph somewhere of us dressed like that, and but I, I, I didn't have time to look for it. So, um, yeah, I must have looked really cool in these white trousers with the tartan striped down. I think they were brown platform wedges and my tartan scarf tied me around my wrist. I'm sure, you know, I must have looked really fashionable. Um, and the, other, the only other thing I wanted to mention... So this is the last thing from my childhood memories. It's been a bit rambly, but I hope you're enjoying it. The last thing I remember is um, going to the cinema when I was 15 to see Grease. Absolutely iconic movie. Uh, and I went to see it when it first came out. There was a huge queue. If you're from this area, there was a cinema in Low Fell, which is in Gateshead, called The Classic. Um, and it was on Low Fell, or what we call the Fell. Uh, and there was a queue right down the Fell for, you know, kids of, of my age and possibly a little bit older, queuing to see Greece. And we, I think it was me and my friends from school, we sat in the back row at the cinema. I think we took a flask of tea with her. Um, we were so cool at 15. Took a flask of tea to watch Greece. Um, and I, 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 I still, when I watch that movie, I think of standing in that queue and sitting in the cinema with my friends watching that. And the, the moment, the moment in Greece that really stands out for me, and it's not the, you know, the, the lovey-dovey scenes with John Travolta and um, Olivia Newton-John. For me, it's when Sandy and Danny are at the drive-in movie and they're watching the movie and there's an advert on. And in the advert, there's a hot dog jumps into a bun. That is the moment I remember most from Greece. Um, what moment do you remember most from Greece? Do you remember the hot dog in the bun? It's strange the kind of things you remember. But anyway, those are my childhood memories of a few different things. I'd love to know what your childhood memories are. You know, even if your childhood was in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to go over and watch Marie uh, from At Busy Bay Marie, Tina from Tina's Talk Time, and Maria from At Maria Crocker to see what their childhood memories are, because I like to listen to what other people remember from, from you know, those years. Um, I do find it quite fun. So don't forget to go over and watch those. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. Um, I'll see you again on Tuesday with, I don't know what yet, um, but I hope you'll come back then and, and have a look. So thanks so much for watching. That's all I've got for you. Um, bye for now.